In a parliament sitting on August 3, Workers' Party Member of Parliament Raisa Khan highlighted the need to combat sexual violence. She also discussed female genital cutting, polygamy in Singapore, and the hijab. Madam Deputy Speaker, my speech today is about women. I want to focus on four main areas, sexual violence, female genital cutting, polygamy, and the hijab. I now move on to the topic of female genital cutting, defined by, defined by UNICEF as the injury, partial or total removal of the external female genital organs for non-medical reasons. This practice, Sunat Prampuan, as it is known in Malay, continues in Singapore, quiet though it may be. It has not escaped the notice of foreign press, such as Reuters and BBC, or even local activists working on this issue. Many of my friends in the Malay Muslim community have gone through this practice themselves. While there are many facets to this complex issue, I wish today to solely focus on the medical and health implications of the practice. As recently as 20 years ago, FGC was performed by traditional midwives in homes with no sterilizations or anesthesia. Today, I understand that the procedure is mostly performed by doctors in private clinics. The cut ranges from a symbolic placement of scissors or a penknife on the intended organ or a nick, but the most common form of cutting in Singapore still involves some removal of genital tissue. The effects of FGC are wide ranging. Anecdotal experiences reveal an overcutting or laceration of other parts of the vulva. Considering that the typical size of a baby's vulva is a mere 1.5 centimeters, this may lead to a disproportionate loss of nerve endings and the creation of scar tissue. Additionally, as with any invasive medical procedure, there's always a chance of infection. Female genital cutting may also hurt a baby's attachment to a caregiver. A study by the Washington University School of Medicine found that a common defense mechanism of the nervous system to pain is to shut down, which negatively affects interactions with a caregiver. A second potential negative mental health impact is on childhood brain development. Exposure to acute pain in babies and children activates biological stress responses, which may hinder optimal development. In essence, babies feel pain, even if they process it differently from adults. Babies still face the risk of long-term physical and mental health implications, as well as strained bonds with their parents, with female genital cutting. In a reply to the BBC article, a representative of Mu'iz said, it does not condone any procedures which bring harm to the individual, adding that the council has always held the position that female genital, genital cutting should be avoided. Noting the pain that such acts can bring to females undergoing such practices. I was circumcised when I was a young girl, because uh, I was born in the 60s, right? And it's a known thing. I, I've seen it. You know, my peers were all cut. And it's a ritual almost to have the uh, midwife or some woman coming to the house to circumcise the girl babies. And like all cultural practices, you don't question the validity of this or legitimacy of this, like why? So I was very, so I was extremely shocked and I felt very, very violated and I felt very betrayed. So then I asked my mom, why did she do it? And she said that uh, you were cut. Uh, because I didn't want you to be adulterous, because it's clean and because it's part of the religion. And so at this time, I was 22 years old uh, and I only found out about the cutting or that it even happens within the Muslim community at all, only at that age. Uh, and that's the truth for a lot of Muslim women. When Sauza Faradilla was 22, she found out that her genitals had been cut when she was a baby. This was part of a traditional practice among Singapore's Muslim community. While Singapore is known to be modern, there are conservative social values that are still being retained. Female genital mutilation may be banned in many other parts of the world, 
but it is not illegal in Singapore. The practice is believed to be a common one, but many do not even realize that their genitals were mutilated until they turn into teenagers or adults. Sousa revealed that she felt very betrayed and that she only discovered she had been put through the same practice when voicing out her objections about a younger relative facing the same issue. When the clitoris, like about who this cut, is thought to lower female sexual desire. And so because of that, then women won't be, uh, won't be wild or will be more chaste. Uh, so because of that, then people think that it will control female sexuality and the patriarchy. Having felt shocked and violated because of her discovery, she confronted her mother about it. Her mother explained that she did not want Saza to be unfaithful and that the practice, which is part of their religion, is clean. Often, the clitoris or clitoral hood are cut during the procedures. While it is less extreme than in some other places, local activists dub it as a violation and aim to end it. Sousa works with a group of mostly Muslim women to eliminate misbeliefs through Instagram and pamphlets, as well as organize workshops to support those who had the procedure before. But when I had my two girls later on in my life, I, I discovered things and I also found you know, the power within me to actually you know, make that decision, no, I'm not going to circumcise my two daughters. Something make, made me feel like it's not right to send the girls uh, to be cut. However, others object to their beliefs, saying that the activists are not good Muslims. Those who support the practice think it decreases a woman's libido while lowering the chances of them cheating. However, the World Health Organization says that it offers no health benefits, is risky, and violates girls' rights. So to say definitively that my sexual life has been affected by circumcision is difficult yeah, because you cannot uh, uh, claim that without real evidence, right? But circumcision is just the tip of the iceberg, you know, to control women by, by saying that you are not entitled to sexual pleasure or you are not entitled to uh, having choices as to who you uh, date and all that. The Singapore government is afraid that if they were to ban this practice, it would kind of anger the local Muslim community. Or that if they kind of let this practice continue and they affirm it on a, on a national level, what will happen is that the international human rights community might be upset. And so because of that, they've chosen to take a silent kind of stance. I strongly urge the Ministry of Health to conduct a thorough review of female genital cutting procedures done in private clinics. We should aim to standardize and make transparent the amount of skin cut during the procedure or enforce that the practice should be purely symbolic, ensure that the proper instrumentation is used, and as with similar types of medical procedures, require medical counseling for those who seek to carry it out. The counseling process will allow for doctors to first assess if a baby is medically fit to undergo the procedure, as well as to educate parents on the potential risks. The counseling can also serve to make sure that neither parent is being coerced to comply with the practice, either by their spouse, relatives, or external parties. After, consult, after counseling, there should be a mandatory 48-hour period after which, if the parents still wish to proceed with the cutting, they may arrange with the appointment. The decision to proceed should be unanimous, and there should be measures in place to ensure that the procedure is being done with the knowledge of both parents. Finally, I hope that the ministry can commission a study to find out the prevalence of the practice and evaluate the accompanying medical risks that may follow. This will help us understand the potential medical risks faced by those who undergo the procedure. This is what I feel is the crux of this motion. I call all of us in this house to work towards fulfilling the aspirations of Singapore women. I support this motion. Thank you. You are watching The Independent Singapore. Subscribe to this channel for more news and documentaries.